Five three. Y'all bow with me. There is a spirit here. Did any of y'all hear that just a minute ago? Caleb kept trying to da 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 da, and, it, it, and there was a spirit that, that, that was hindering her. We have prayed against the spirit, and it has not gone yet. So I'm going to ask you, y'all bow with me. There's nothing going to hinder what God's going to say through him today. We're not going to allow it. We're not going to put up with it, okay? So bow with me. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you. And I praise you, oh God. Father, you promised us in your word that we were given dominion. We are given authority over the dominions of Satan. We have that dominion ourselves because you gave it to us. You told us in your word, greater works will we do than you have done because you have given us the power to do so. And Father, we come in the name of Jesus today. We cleanse this house. We cleanse this house now of every evil, of every imp, of every spirit, of every spirit of confusion, of every spirit of chaos, of every spirit of confusion you will not reside in this house today in the name of Jesus by the authority of Jesus I cast you down and back to the dry and barren lands of hell just by the word my testimony for those words I have no authority but the authority that Jesus has given me you must bow to and you are not welcome here you have no you have no right you have absolutely no authority to be here. And you are cast out. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you cleanse this house of all things that would hinder your word from going out. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, she can of glory fall into this place, fill it as thick as a cloud of smoke like it was in the Holy of Holies in the day, Lord God, when your, when your ark of your covenant sat in that place. Father, we pray for your glory. We pray for your spirit to fall on this place, Lord. Empower us. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come inside our hearts today. Give us understanding. Give us peace. Revive us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray your blessings over this messenger today, Lord God. In Jesus' holy, precious name, Lord God, we will overcome. He will overcome by the, by the word of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony of God. Father, be with him. Anoint him. Anoint your message. I know you're going to. And I come with expectancy. Father, I come with expectancy. Today, Lord God, speak to your people. In Jesus' holy name, amen. None at all. No batteries at all. I'll tell y'all what. I was told I was supposed to take it. It's okay, we can hear. Huh? They told me I was supposed to take it out. Oh, I, I don't know. And charge them. I got some coming though. I asked Vicky, I said, hey, it's got hot batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> you know, I'm gonna blame her today. I know, right? There weren't none even in there. All right, man, now I'm working, right? Yeah. Wow. Man, I don't know about y'all, but this literally feels like it's been one of the longest weeks of my life. Amen. Anybody else been there? Like literally, like I remember um, last Friday uh, we did coffee with the pastors. This Friday we did it, and I'm like, have we done this in the past month? Like it just seems like we haven't, and and then church today, it, it just it almost feels like the first time we, we come to meet again all together, you know. And um, but I'm really excited, you know. If God gave me this the, the message that I'm going to speak today, um, right after He gave me the one three weeks ago, and so it's almost like a series, but like spaced out over like three weeks, I guess you could say. Um, but um. I'm really, really excited uh, to, 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 to preach this message. And, um, 
You know, for some of you, like, parts of this might not reach you. Um, parts of it might. Um, you know, there's parts of it that go real deep. But then there's parts of it that are an inch deep and a mile wide, right? But because there's just simple truths that we have to answer and that we have to come to the knowledge of. And, and, and basically, the question that I'm going to continue to ask you today, and, and God's just having one of those, you know, when I look through this book that I've written all my sermons in, some of them are about people and the passage that those people live. And then some of them just ask questions. And it seems like God gives me uh, a section where I'm talking about people and passages and then another section where I'm talking about questions. But today's question is very simple. And it's, what is your relationship status? What, what is your relationship status? And I'm not talking about in the physical realm. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, your, your um, love life today. I'm talking about your spiritual relationship status today. And, you know, your, your relationship status with Jesus, where does that stand with you today? Because as we look all throughout the Scriptures, all throughout the New Testament, Jesus makes it very clear that being a disciple is, is all about relationship and nothing about religion. Amen. Amen. That's right. Exactly. He makes it very clear through all through all of his passages that you read, you can see relationship. You can see stay in me and I will stay in you. You can see all of these different things that that that, that, that bring you in a closer relationship with him, something that religion cannot give you. Religion cannot give you peace of mind. Only Jesus can. Religion is religion holds us back as a church. Jesus does not. You know, I had a great conversation last night uh, with some guys, um, and, and and it was really cool. We got together for Tara's birthday, and literally, like all four of us, literally like sat and talked to church about all night long, and we talked about. Uh, these different things and, 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 and it came up, you know, relationship versus religion and, and how the church is being held back because, you know, the, the, they fall into the legalism and, and traditionalism that, that, that was the church that, that men created in order for themselves to be the God and not for Jesus to be the God. And see, not really at this church, not at all really at this church, but in other Places of worship, they are still stuck in this. They're still stuck in that it's religion. And even people that come into this church are stuck in it just being a religion. That if they come in and they get and they hear me talk or Scotty talk and they listen to good worship music and they can go right back out in the world and live exactly how they they that they come in and nothing ever changes. And we check off the box and say, I'm good this week because I got my religion. I got my tradition in. I got. I checked off the box. Brought my kids. Check mark. They're getting Jesus. But are they seeing Jesus at home? Are they seeing that relationship with Jesus that you you're supposed to have? What is your relationship status, church? And I know there's probably a lot of people watching online, so that, hey, that, that, that's a great question. What is it? You know, I'm just going to jump right into it. And today I'm going to, you know, I, I, I took some time and, and looked up the Greek meaning and some of these words and, and things of that nature. So some of this might bore you. Um, some of this might excite you. I really don't know. But um, are you all ready? Turn, turn with me to John 15, 4. So, coincidentally, when you, and, and I know this because I did it, um, when you type in, see, I do this a lot. I'm like, I get Google out. Who, who's, who else is a Google fan? Amen. Me. I'm definitely a Google <laughs> fan. And so, anytime I'm like, I'm like, I typed in verses about relationship with Jesus. And this is the first one that popped up. Amen. So coincidentally, this is the first thing that pops up. 
And, and let me just read it. Um, I'm going to start in verse 4. It says, stay over here. It says, Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Mm. Let's keep reading. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile and burned. So, so, so let's just get this straight. Like, this is a good depiction of eternal life. In my opinion. So, if you remain in Jesus and He remains in you and you've got that relationship and you're going strong and you're producing good fruit, then you will remain in Him eternally. But if you choose not to, if you choose to fall away from Him, if you never choose Him, period, then you will be cut off and you will dry up and you will wither and you will burn in hell. Not everybody likes that. That's true. That's the tr that, uh, uh, Did I read it wrong? I, I don't think so. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you will be my true... What does that say? Disciple. My true disciple. You will truly be my disciple. You will truly uh, follow me. And check this out. This brings great glory to my Father. You see, there are a lot of fruitless Christians. And I say that because Throughout the Scripture, Jesus never called anybody to be a Christian. He said, He called you to be a disciple. He called you to be a disciple. To follow Him. And it just says, to when, when you are My disciple, and when I remain in you, and you remain in Me, and that relationship stays strong, then what are you going to produce? Fruit. People are going to be able to tell that you are a Christian. Not by your Facebook. Not by your Instagram. Not by your, you know, whatever you want to say. But they're going to be able to tell when they look at you. By the way you act. By the way you talk. By the way that you do things. By the way that you give. By the way that you love people. They are going to know that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. But so many of us live a fruitless Christian life. So many of us live a fake Christian life. So many of us. We come in and we put on our coat of Christianity and we sit down and we talk a big game. We talk a real big game. And we have great ideas and we have great plans. But when we leave, we never follow through with any of them. Turn to Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7, 15 says, so check this out. So basically this is talking about your fruitless Christians. Okay? Um, it says, Beware of false prophets who uh, come in disguise as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their what? By their fruit. You can identify who they are by their fruit. That is by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from a thorn bush? Or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit. Period. A good tree produces good fruit. Period. You know, it doesn't produce good fruit half the time and then bad fruit the other half the time. 
<laughs> right, right. I mean, let's just be let's just be real. And it says a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into what? The fire. Mm. Yes. Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, you can also identify people by their what? Actions. Does that say you can identify people by their works? Yes. Does that say that you can identify people by what, how they, what they do? How they talk? Yes. yes, by their actions. Exactly. So, in a time where the church really needs to be loving people, and pushing nothing but Jesus. We have these Christians out here putting up fleshly comments, putting up fleshly thoughts and opinions, and doing nothing but creating division. I can't tell you how many, how many Christians in this time where the church needs to be pushing Jesus because Jesus is the only answer. You have Christians and you have pastors that are pushing out their own fleshly thoughts and opinions. And I'm going to tell you what that makes me so mad. That aggravates me a lot. Because in a time that Jesus has given us to take advantage of this as the church, repent and come back to Him and bring people to Him, we want to create more division. God is not a God of division. He is a God of peace and love. And we sit here and we just want to, you know, you know, I, I, I don't think they should be doing this or that. Just, just push Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the love that is going to change every single thing. Man, like it just... I, God wanted to ask this question. What separates you from the world? They know us by our love. That's right. Amen. What separates you from the world? Love. Why have we as a church missed that? When all Jesus does is love us, why do we want to condemn and judge? Why do we want to throw out our own fleshly desires that, that, that come from the devil and not just love? The last time I checked, when Jesus died on that cross, He died for every race and every color. That's right. And you, and you know, and half the problem is is because you got these people in these in these seminaries that believe Jesus was a white man with blue eyes and brown hair. Jesus was a Jew. Like I do not understand. I don't know how that you come to that conclusion that he was white. If Israel is his chosen people and the Jews are his chosen people, don't you think he was a Jew as well? But we want to just create all of this stuff about us to make us feel good and to boast ourselves up. And we want to judge people. We want to condemn people. We want to tell people when they're wrong. But we don't want to love them. That's right. So you will know them by their fruits. And, you know, God just kind of gave me three different relationship statuses. But basically... I, I'm going to explain it here in a second. Basically, there's two relationship statuses, but he gave me three, and I'm going to explain, so don't jump on me right now. But which one do your fruits say you are? One is single. Are you single in your spiritual relationship status? Are you it's complicated in your relationship status? Or are you in a relationship? In your spiritual relationship status? And, 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 and what do your fruits say you are? You know, so many times, you know, 
We look at, 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 at fruits and, and, and we look at them like all the only thing a fruit is is your works. And we just establish that it's actions and everything else. But but check this out. Because fruits go much deeper than just your works, okay? So Colossians 3 7. Colossians 3 7. And, and I was reading this this week in, in my study, and like I had to repent. Because I've let some of the old man try to come back, and like my anger issues have been uh, kind of bad. However, I'll, I'll say this. Um, no, I can't say it. But when you put up a garage door, just you and your wife, because you're trying to save money. Has anybody ever tried to put up a garage door? <laughs> I know Brent has. Has anybody else tried to put up a garage door? Have you had? I'll it pay is. somebody next time. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? I don't work, I'll save the money next time. Hey, let that gum spring. Hey, it, it, is, it is not for the weak, let me tell you that. Okay? Alright? But check this out in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 7 through 10. It says, You used to do these things when your life was still a part of what? This world. This world. Mm. But now. It's time, is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malice behavior, slander, and dirty language. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I heard me too. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature. Put on your new nature. And be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Now, I'm going to attempt this. But in verse 10, I want to read that one more time. It says, put on your new nature. Put on your new nature. Because you're not the old man anymore. That old man keeps trying to come back and he says, no, put on your new nature. And put away all of its wicked deeds. Sorry, I read a little bit of the nine. To know, I'm sorry, and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator. Now, know, that word actually means <clears throat> in the Greek. I'm just trying to sound uh, uh, sophisticated. sophisticated and educated today. <laughs> Epic in also. That may be no so. Okay? And y'all know what that means? Check this out. It means to know means the knowledge of. Check this out. Knowledge gained through first hand relationship. That's what the Greek says. The words. Knowledge obtained because you have a first hand relationship with your Creator. You see, pastors have got to, 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 to start giving away their power and giving it back to God for the church to become powerful again. That's right. That's right. It's all his anyway. Here's the deal that, that, that I, love, I, I love about this place. It's that so many people have, have come to us and said, man, you're touchable, man. Like, you, 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 you'll talk to me. You'll, you'll, you'll do things with me. You, you know what I'm saying? And like, I've never got that anywhere else. It's because these pastors have tried to take the power away from the church and we see here that, that the power and how that you actually give away all of the old man is by knowing the Creator on a first-hand relationship basis. That is amazing to me. That really spoke to me. Now, that's what the power that he has in that relationship can take away. Now turn to Galatians. Five. Galatians five twenty two. Five twenty two through twenty five. Now here are their fruits, okay? And so we have to realize that. Our relationship status is a lot based on our fruits. 
Okay? We got that? That's how we can see how our relationship status is. Now, 522 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what He produces. So, let's get this right. Fruits are so much more and so much deeper than just works. That we have in our mind. See, we have to break that barrier down in our mind. That my fruit doesn't just come from my works. My fruit comes from every aspect of my, of my being. So, when we look at the fruits... And I'm just going to read this. So you're single. If you're single, if your spiritual relationship you say is single, then you're doing your own thing. Right? You're doing your own thing and, and you're not worried about anything. And if you're single, a lot of times you're totally shut off. Your heart is totally shut off. Especially after breakup. My heart's totally shut off, right? I'm single. I'm doing my own thing. And that's how we act. We're supposed to be Christians. I'd rather you proclaim not to be a Christian than to proclaim to be a Christian and live a single spiritual relationship. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because all you're doing is trampling on the death of Jesus and the cross he died. So it's complicated. I know a lot of people probably in this relationship status. <laughs> right? It's complicated. You know, it's, it's good sometimes, it's bad sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, we, we have our rough patches. You know, it's complicated. You're riding the fence. It's complicated. You're riding the fence. That's an easy way for you to say, I'm riding the fence. I'm trying to play both sides. I got one foot in the world and one foot in Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I'm just riding the fence. You're back and forth. You're trying to play... The what? Gray area. <laughs> yeah. When it's complicated, you're trying to play in the gray area. Now, the problem is, is that there is no gray area with God. So let, so, so let me explain why there's three. Now, the two are the same. You see, it's complicated and single are the same thing. But we like to say it's complicated so that we're not single. Right? We like to say it's complicated because sometimes we come to church and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we read our Bible and sometimes we don't. And when we get in a pinch, we pray. And when it's all good, we don't. And, and am I not right? You know, we just continue to, to play the greater. Now, Revelation 3, 15 and 16 says, I'm just going to, I'm going to turn there, turn there. Hey, can you put that on the screen for me, Dexter? It says, Revelation 3, 15 and 16. It says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. Does that sound like the gray area to you? Does that sound like riding the fence to you? Does that sound like going back and forth to you? That sounds, me too. I wish that you were one or the other. That's why there's two relationship statuses. Because Jesus says, I wish you were one or the other. Go to 16. It says, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. I thought I could see better up here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can't see the screen. <laughs> It says, but since you're in the corner, now I got a question. Now I have to take some um, some allergy pills every morning. And I'm not a tap water guy, but we, you know, we I, I brought my little fridge home from, from the school I was at, so we put it in the in the uh, garage for, for drinks. And all the water's out there. So I'm like, well, okay, I guess I'll just get some tap water. It don't have to be very much, because you know. So I get a cup out, and I tell you what, I can barely choke it down. 
Oh, man. You know, why? Because it's lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? It's like not hot, not cold. It's kind of in the middle. And I'm just like, anybody else like that? No. Well, I was going to try to use a good analogy, but I guess not now. Yeah. But here's the deal. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can drink ice coffee. Yeah. I can drink ice coffee. But guys, how many of us are riding the fence? How many of us are living our life in the gray area? We want to say, oh, that's not really what the Bible means. I can live it this way. We want to interpret the Bible this way so that we can live comfortably and happily. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus is not comfortable. That's right. Okay? Let's be real honest. Jesus is anything but comfortable. Because once you think you got the relationship figured out, He's going to ask you to go deeper. He's going to ask you to take that next step. He's going to ask you to let those roots grow a little bit deeper. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes you think you're going to drown. But Jesus is always there to pick you up. Right. But so many of us are living that it's complicated in a relationship. Man, you're walking with Jesus. Check this out. When you walk with Jesus, you talk with Jesus. And when you talk with Jesus, you learn from Jesus. And when you learn from Jesus, you gain knowledge from Jesus. And when you gain knowledge from Jesus, you live like Jesus did. That's what the relationship is. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's knowing Him. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to interject this. You can't gain knowledge unless you're invested in it. You can't gain knowledge unless you're invested in it. If you were like me, I have a master's degree and I was not invested in any single credit hour that I went to school. That, that. Thank you. Thank you. I just did enough to get by. I was not actually invested in it. How many of you can't remember how to do algebra that don't use it every day? Okay, you weren't invested in it either. <laughs> don't just hate on me. I feel better now because you know I am. I know Matt does. Whew, Matt's a lot smarter than I am. But Matt was invested in it. That's what he wanted to do with his life. You see, we have to want to want Jesus. We have to want to seek Jesus. We have to want to have that relationship with Jesus or we're never going to really be invested in it. And we're going to live that it's complicated to make some people happy and other people happy, right? Because half your family wants you to be a Christian. Half your friends want you to be a Christian. The other half don't. They don't care. They just want you to go party and do whatever you want to do, right? And so we live with it's complicated relationship with Jesus. And we live in the gray area because it's easier. And we say, you know, the Bible, you know, that, that verse there, you know, I've really done some research and that's really not what it means. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard that from anybody in the gray area? Amen. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask the musicians to come up while I, while I finish this last little, little part. I'm going to be in John 3. I mean John 17, I'm sorry. John 17, 3. It says, This is the way to eternal life. To know you. Comma. The only true God. Comma. So to know God. And to know Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Once again, I did some research on that no. And that no means they may know. And it's the same word like Luke's talked about all before, genosko in the in the in the Hebrew in the Greek. And it means to come to know. 
recognize, perceive, properly to know, especially through personal experiences. And I'll give the example that Luke gave many times. When Jesus, when, when, when Jesus, when, when God told that, when God told Mary that she was pregnant with Jesus, she says, "How can I be pregnant for I've not known the man?" It's the same word. It's an intimate knowing. You see, we have to have that intimate knowing to know who Jesus is, to know the Creator of the universe that created you. You see, so many times we just don't take it seriously, man. It's, it's like, oh yeah, that was a great sermon. Oh yeah, that really touched. That, that that really convicted me. You know what? I'll pray about it tonight at home when I'm by myself. I've done it. You see, church. It's not about religion. It never was about religion. It's all about our relationship with Jesus. It's all about a relationship with the Creator of the universe. And I have to ask you one last time, what's your status? What's your status? Are you single? Are you, man, it's complicated right now, which means you're single. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you in a relationship? You see, hopefully today, those of you that are in that relationship, you just got confirmation through all of those scriptures. But those who aren't in a relationship, I hope that you realize that that's what you need. That that's what's going to heal you. That's what's going to fix you. And I'm going to pray. That was a quick message. Goodness gracious, we're going to get out early today. It's only 11.36. But I pray that you come and get it right. If you're living in that gray area, those of you watching, if you're living in that gray area or you just tuned in because, hey, I'm single and I'm just, I got to find out what God is all about. Today you found out. He wants your heart. He wants your life. So that all of those things that hinder you, the anger, the malice, the, 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 the behavior that that keeps on setting you back. He can take all that away from you and set you free. And it's amazing to see what happens when God sets you free from that and those good fruits start to grow. When that bad tree turns into a good tree. Because the beauty of Jesus Christ is you can be a bad tree for a while. But when you come to know Him and live that relationship with Him, then you start producing good fruit. Jesus is the only answer. And that's the only answer that's ever going to be right is Jesus and His love. May you come to Him today and get that spiritual relationship right with Him. God, I can do that and I thank You so much, Father. God, I pray that I hit Your mark, Father. I, I pray that, man, the people listen. May Your words sink down deep into their spirit, Father. Down deep into their soul and speak to them. God, may the church repent. Because sometimes it's so hard to, to keep that old man back, right? Sometimes we have to repent and say, no, old man, you're not coming back. May, re may we repent. Seek you, Father. 
And with your power, may you heal this land. May you heal our church. I say church, Father, because the church as a whole, Father. May you, may you unite us, Father, so that we can become the force of love and peace that you had all along in mind. Father, as a man says, may we be the antidote to the poison. May we suffocate the evil and overcome it with the good like the verse that Caitlin read today. Father, I love you and I appreciate you. Amen.
Continue to to uh, help us and convict us with lead, put, putting that old man away, Father, so that that new man can be renewed each and every day, Father, and that we may live for you and you alone. In your son's name, I pray. Amen. 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 